welcome to this update video. I really hope you're doing well this morning. Now we're going to be taking a look at what is going on across the North Atlantic and we're seeing that there is some severe weather moving through parts of the southern United States and also a bit of activity loitering out there in the Atlantic, not being a bother for anyone, but in the Eastern Pacific as we take a look off, uh, offshore Central America in the Pacific we can see that there is a lot of activity. So that general area is getting more active and there is a likelihood that we could see something form this week. So from last week, I've been talking about, you know, the fact that models are expecting development and we could definitely see that come to fruition within the next couple of days. So later in the video, we're going to be taking a look at what models have to show in their latest runs. But for now, as we zoom into the Caribbean here, we can see that it is quiet. There's nothing really uh, going on right now. There's a lot of dry air around associated with the Saharan dust that has been moving through the region. A couple of showers, thunderstorms in parts of Central America. But for the most part, it is a quiet morning. Although, as the day goes on, there could be some showers around for some areas. So looking at the rainfall forecast here, not even seeing where it is really colorful for the Caribbean to indicate that, hey, there could be some substantial rain. But a few showers could loiter around parts of the Bahamas, Florida, uh, Cuba, Jamaica, even near the Cayman Islands as well, going to Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands through the Lesser Antilles. Much not expected at all for the ABC Islands, likely to be a pretty uh, dry day today. And as we head to Northern South America for parts of Colombia, Venezuela, and the Guianas, there may be some heavy downpours. Towards Central America now, Panama, Costa Rica, even near Nicaragua, we can see that it gets a little bit colorful in that area. So there could definitely be some heavy rain and thunderstorms, some additional heavy rain and thunderstorms. And uh, going towards the coast of El Salvador and even Guatemala, we see a little bit of color popping up as well. So it is going to be active over in the eastern Pacific. However, it's going to be a windy day in parts of the Caribbean. So here we're looking at the forecast from Euro and we're seeing all these blue and purple shadings popping up. So areas such as the ABC Islands just offshore Colombia, uh, the Caribbean coast of Colombia that is, and within the vicinity of the Yucatan Peninsula, so Mexico, Belize, the Bay Islands of Honduras, even for parts of Honduras, it may be a pretty windy day. Some of the wind gusts could be up to 40 miles per hour. That's tropical storm force winds right there. So it's going to be a pretty windy day. And, you know, hopefully that helps to offset the heat, especially in the ABC Islands. But as we head into later this evening, winds may also kick up a little bit for the Bahamas. Elsewhere should be around 5, going up to 10 knots, maybe 15 knots at the most today. Now, before I delve into what models are showing in regards to the Eastern Pacific, here is the question of the day. Okay, so what is the name of the instrument that is used to measure and record seismic activity? So seismic activity, that's referring to like, you know, earthquakes, and there is an instrument used to measure and record it. What is the name of that instrument? Save your answer. You'll know if you're correct later in the video. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what models have to show. We're starting out with the GFS model, and this is for uh, this coming Sunday on the 19th of May. So GFS is showing that an airflow pressure could form. We see 1,002 right there. That's 1,002 millibars at the center of that system. So again, models have been consistently showing an airflow pressure forming. And as we head into Monday of next week, going a week out from now, we can see that the value decreases. And once this value is decreasing, that is a sign of strengthening. And it is offshore Mexico. The ICON model is also expecting that we're going to be seeing development. This is for Friday, the 17th of May, later this week. So there we can see that 1,000 millibar low pressure system just offshore southern Mexico. And ICON is showing that it is going to be loitering around for a bit and intensifying. We see the pressure going down to 977 millibars. That's hurricane intensity right there. So ICON is pretty consistent about that. And eventually, the model has the system making its way off to the west by Monday, the 20th of May. Then we've got the Canadian model, which is also showing intensification. We see that 
998 millibar low pressure system likely a tropical storm at that point that eventually moves out and weakens so there we can see that the models are being pretty consistent about that expected area of low pressure and looking at the list again this is the list of names for the pacific hurricane season this year the first name aleta so we could see aleta later this week or even next week and then for the Pacific, uh, the Atlantic hurricane season, rather, the first name on the list is Alberto. So we're yet to see signs of something like really forming within, say, a week or so. And there is a pretty decent chance that we may not have preseason development this year. And one of the factors is the Saharan air layer. Let's look at the forecast for that for this week. Here we're taking a look at it and all those brown shadings indicate the dust. So as we're going to be heading through today, there should be a decrease in the quantity of dust across parts of the Lesser Antilles, but there is still going to be some around for parts of Jamaica, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, maybe even Anguilla and St. Martin up there, ABC Islands, parts of Venezuela, and even towards Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago. And as we're going to be heading into later this week, much of the Caribbean should be the clear from any of that dense dust. But look at that next plume on its way, and that should arrive by Friday. So there we're seeing that, you know, the dust is making its way across the main development region, and this is one of the things that helps to stabilize the atmosphere, helps to prevent all that convection. So it is pretty quiet right now as it relates to any significant thunderstorm activity to say that, yes, there is a tropical wave coming off. So the dust is definitely helping out uh, with limiting how much thunderstorm activity is going on right now across the main development region and even parts of Africa as well. But as usual, I'm here to keep you guys posted on what is happening. And going back to the question of the day, let's see if you got it right. What is the name of the instrument that is used to measure and record seismic activity? The answer is a seismograph. So that is what is used to uh, measure the seismic activity. And there is also the Richter scale, which is not the answer to this question, but the Richter scale is basically used to class the earthquakes. You know, based on the data collected from the seismograph, then the Richter scale is used to make that determination of what magnitude that earthquake would be. And so guys, you can let me know in the comments if you got that correct, but that is what I wanted to share with you in this update video, and I really do hope that you found it to be very informative. However, if you have any questions, do feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you when I get the chance to do so, and remember to always be weatherwise.